الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمير أهل السنة جاني to مدينة in 1980 دعاء of the successor of أمير أهل السنة O Lord of Mustafa Whosoever reads or listens to the 23 page booklet Amir of Ahl Sunnah's journey to Medina then for the sake of the devotee of Medina the Amir of Ahl Sunnah Damat Barakatul Aliya grant them true love for Medina and become eternally pleased with them Amin bi jahi khatam min nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the excellences of reciting salat upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam whomever i am mentioned before he should send salat upon me whosoever sends salat upon me once allah almighty will send 10 ten, ten mercies upon him sallu ala alhabib sallallahu ala muhammad first night in medina it is the first night of the amir of ahl sunnah's visit to medina The doors of Masjid Al-Nabawi had been closed. It was the time of true dawn. And there were a few people present in the masjid for Tahajjud Salah. In a state of passion and longing, the Amir of Ahl Sunnah stands in the shadow of the green dome, gazing upon its beauty. He stands from the direction in which the sacred feet of the final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam face. from bab jibril whilst not turning his back he continues facing the green dome and walks backwards to where he intends to head what unique feelings he must have been experiencing at this time the green dome which millions of eyes yearn to see is directly before him in this state of joy and spiritual elevation a trial suddenly presents itself in following the blessed sunnah of the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the amir of ahl sunnah had grown his hair there was a policeman present there who called him towards himself saying ta'al meaning come here when he approached the policeman the latter asked what are you doing How could the feelings and emotions experienced at that time be expressed in words? Allah knows best what he was thinking. Investigating further, he requested a passport. The Amir of Ahlus Sunnah said, "It is at the place where I am staying." The policeman then looked at his lengthy hair and asked, "What is this?" The Amir of Ahlus Sunnah an unparalleled devotee of the sunnah smiled and replied as sunnah meaning this is sunnah perhaps due to his lack of knowledge the policeman touched the beard of amir of ahl sunnah damat barakatuhu aliya and retorted hadhi his sunnah this is the sunnah long hair is not hearing this the amir of ahl sunnah recalled that in the previous year some mischievous individuals with long hair had visited masjid al haram they committed many wrongdoings there and many hujjaj had been martyred in this terrible incident consequently they were apprehended and punished for their crimes perhaps the policeman was thinking that amir of ahl sunnah damat barakatuhu aliya was affiliated with them the policeman then kicked his friend awake who was sleeping nearby As soon as he awoke he took hold of his gun as the time of fajr was approaching and he needed to refresh his wuzu the devotee of medina was growing uneasy as he did not know what they intended to do the policeman opened the door of a tiny room that was nearby and told him to enter the amir of ahl sunnah became worried and he began thinking to himself allah forbid If they leave me here how will I perform wuzu and offer salah with this thought in mind he instinctively called out in his mother tongue of maiman ya rasulullah kidda phasai wiyu 
O Messenger of Allah, where have I become trapped? As soon as these words were said, the help of the beloved Prophet ﷺ arrived. The policeman began to laugh and whilst closing the door simply said, Have your hair cut. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad The one who alleviates difficulties. Dear Islamic brothers, in this story describing the Amir of Ahlu Sunnah's first night in Medina, we learn an inkling of his profound love for Salah. We also learn of how he requests for help from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam whenever a difficulty arises. In regard to Salah, of what use is a person without it? Salah should not be missed under any circumstances. Moreover, we learn that if a devotee remembers the Prophet ﷺ in a state of hardship and sorrow, the Prophet ﷺ assists and grants him, him relief from his difficulty. The final Prophet ﷺ is aware of the unseen and with the permission of Allah Almighty, he helps those who call out to him. One of his well-known titles is Dafi'ul Bala, meaning Remover of Calamities. This title of his is established through the Qur'an, as it is stated in part 9, verse 33 of Surah Al-Anfal, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Translation from Kanzul Iman And it is not befitting to Allah to punish them whilst you, O beloved, are in their midst. The Imam of Ahl sunnah Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullah Alayh states, Subhanallah, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam is an alleviator of calamities. This is to such a great extent that even disbelievers have calamities removed from them for his sake. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam is especially compassionate and merciful to the Muslims. Shah Wali Allah Muhaddisi Dehlwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi writes, we do not physically observe it, but the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam comforts us during every calamity. Correcting a misconception, the great Imam of the 7th Hijri century, Imam Taqi ad-Din al-Subqi al-Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi says, the meaning of seeking help from the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam does not mean that he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is an independent creator and effector, i.e. that he helps without the permission of Allah Almighty. This is a notion that no Muslim has in mind. Therefore, to take this meaning, i.e. to consider seeking help from the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as equating him with Allah Almighty and then prohibit seeking help from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is to mislead regarding the religion and place Muslims into difficulty. Hashar mein hum bhi seer dekhenge munkir aaj in se iltija na kare. Explanation of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan's poetry. In this couplet, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullahi alayhi declares, those who consider the beloveds of Allah Almighty to be without authority in the world today, we will see their predicament on the day of judgment, where they will wander in a state of helplessness to the august courts of the noble prophets salam, seeking their intercession, but they will be unsuccessful. He also beautifully writes, Aaj le unki pana Aaj madad maang unse, phir na maanenge qiyamat mein agar maan gaya. Explanation of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan's poetry. 
accept the authority of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam today. Seek refuge in his gracious court and ask for his aid. If you have made up your mind that the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam cannot help even with the bestowal of Allah Almighty, then remember when the beloved Prophet's majesty manifests on the day of judgment, you will have to accept his authority and run to him for help, seeking his intercession. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam will not accept you at that time. This is because this world is the abode of action. If you accept now, it shall benefit you at that time. However, accepting then will be of no use, because the hereafter is not the place for action, but of recompense instead. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad. Entering a dream and bringing happiness to the heart. In, in order to find out how aware the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is regarding the state of his devotees, listen to another account from Amir Ahl Sunnah's journey to Medina in 1980 and rejoice. The late Haji Ismail was a murid of Qutb al Madina rahmatullahi alayhi. The former hailed from Mumbai, I India, and lived in Medina for many years. He informed Amir Ahl Sunnah Damat Barakatul Aliya that there was once an elderly lady who was presenting her salam to the noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, in a simple manner before the golden grills. During this time, her gaze fell upon another woman who was standing next to her, reading from a book and presenting her salam in the prophetic court using beautiful titles. Seeing this, the elderly woman became sorrowful and exclaimed, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, I am not very learned, and perhaps you will only accept the salam of this woman who is presenting it in a beautiful manner. How will my salam be preferred over hers? Saying this, she began to cry in grief. When she went to sleep that night, she was honoured to behold the one who is aware of the state of hearts with the permission of Allah Almighty. The noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam who arrived in her dream and said, Why do you despair? We have accepted your salam before everyone else. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. Amir Ahl sunnah and the wound of Medina. In 1980, during Amir Ahl sunnahs first visit to Medina, the roads had been dug up in the direction of Bab Majidi. The blessed doors of Masjid al-Nabawi named after Sultan Abdul Majid. There were pebbles and stones strewn across the ground. Amir Ahlu Sunnah was walking barefoot in the illuminated city towards the home of his Murshid. When a stone went into his foot, due to swelling and inflammation, it became difficult for him to walk. There was a man who worked in a hospital and would also visit the home of Qutb al Madina. Rahmatullahi alayhi. He was affectionately called Dr. Sahib and Ashik. When he met Amir Ahl Sunnah Damat Barakatumul Aliya and began to speak with him, he turned out to be a true Ashik, i.e., a devotee. He said, How do I begin to treat this? This is a wound of Medina. He then began to narrate some accounts of the pious predecessors. To which Amir Ahl Sunnah Damat Barakatumul Aliya said, I will not treat this wound of Medina. He continued to walk barefoot. Once in this state of pain, he walked to the golden gates parallel to the grave of the final Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and submitted. 
O Messenger of Allah, this is a wound from your blessed streets and you are aware of my state. If I am able to express patience, then may this pain remain with me for the rest of my life. If you consider that I will be unable to show patience, then you alone should please cure it. I will not seek treatment for it. Making this sincere request, he then returned to his place of stay. Due to the hot weather found in the city at that time, the wound eventually healed itself. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad The pure streets of Medina. O devotees of Medina, Masjid al-Nabawi, the most beautiful masjid in the world, was often visited by Amir Ahl Sunnah Damat Barakatumul Aliyah completely alone. This was at a time when Dawat Islami had not yet been established. During one particular evening, after visiting Masjid al Nabawi, Amir Ahl Sunnah exited from Bab Jibreel and was walking alone towards Jannat al Baqi. During that era, there were a few buildings in front of Bab Jibreel, beneath which was a winding street that led towards Jannat al Baqi. Although it appeared to be small in size, it was grand in terms of its esteem. Why would it not be blessed when it had the honour of being a street of Medina? It was further honoured by having many homes belonging to the Ahl al-Bayt on its roadside. The home frontmost to Bab Jibra'il belonged to the first caliph of the Muslims, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu an. Devotees of the Messenger would refer to this street as the heavenly street. However, this street can no longer be seen as it has now been made a part of the masjid. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad The sacred house of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq Respect for the name of Medina From Bab Jibra'il, Amir Ahl sunnah was once walking through the blessed streets of Medina when he saw something on the ground with Al-Madina written upon it. His heart was torn asunder seeing this. The name Medina, which brings untold sweetness upon the tongue of whoever says it. That Medina, whose name causes tears to appear in the eyes of devotees. That Medina, whose name causes the breezes of paradise to blow. The Medina, which is the gem of the entire universe and the city of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam out of love, devotion and utmost decorum he leaned down to kiss the name al Madina. An elderly man saw this and began to grumble in his own language. Amir Ahl sunnah Damat Barakatul Aliya had walked slightly forward after kissing the name of Medina when he heard someone giving salam. Looking back, he saw a Pakistani man who met him in a friendly manner and said, Pay no attention to him. I have been observing you since you visited the Golden Gates and I have great liking for your conduct. Come to our house and eat some food there. Amir Ahl sunnah replied, I have no desire for food. The man requested, accept some money as a gift from me. However, he already possessed the never-ending wealth of devotion to the Prophet ﷺ, so what need did he have for the wealth of this world? Thus, he refused to accept this and said, Alhamdulillah, I have money. The man then requested Amir Ahl Sunnah to stay at his home. But in response, he said, Alhamdulillah, I have a place to stay to. The man insisted many times over, but Amir Ahl Sunnah declined each time. The Streets of Medina 
what can be said about the blessed streets of Medina? Those blessed streets through which the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam passed through hundreds, in fact thousands of times, where the remnants of the blessed homes of the honorable companions and Ahlul Bayt can be found. How can the greatness and excellence of those blessed streets be put into words? Poets have penned thousands of lines of poetry in various languages of the world regarding the virtues of Medina. Sayyidi Qutb al-Medina rahmatullahi alayhi states, Sayyid Amjad Hussain Amjad Hyderabadi wrote his famous Naat in Medina in my very home. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad. Devotees have their own unique ways. Devotees of the illuminated city of Medina have their own inimitably unique ways of expressing their love. Amir Ahl Sunnah once travelled to Medina in 1980 from Karachi alongside other hajis. When reaching the illuminated city, they rented living quarters and found scorpions therein. These honourable hajis did not kill these scorpions, simply because they belonged to Medina. Dear Islamic brothers, these matters pertain to each person's own personal love and sentiments. However, expressing these sentiments are acts exclusively associated to the fortunate. When considering a person's expression of permissible love, it is improper to forbid something which the Sharia does not. If a particular deed does not conflict with Sharia, how can it be forbidden? Although killing dangerous animals without reason is permissible, it is not dictated by necessity. If a scorpion or centipede poses no danger to you, there is now no need to kill it. Not killing it due to the connection it may bear to something sacred is a matter reserved for devotees of the Messenger exclusively. May Allah grant us a share of the love possessed by true devotees of Medina. Another unique way of expressing love. The devotee of Medina, Amir Ahl Sunnah says, Seeds of dates belonging to Medina should not be thrown away. Instead, with a nutcracker or cutter, have them broken into small pieces and consume them from time to time. Otherwise, have them submerge them in deep water. If you show decorum due to their connection with Medina, you will earn reward, insha'Allah. The reason behind Medina bearing profound captivation. O admirers of Medina, at the time of writing, i.e. 2022, many structural adornments and technological advancements have come to the fore in Arabia. When Amir Ahl Sunnah travelled to visit the illuminated city in 1980, nothing of this kind was visible. Instead, the deserts of Arabia and atmosphere of Medina remained untouched. Poets would refer to the illuminated city as the garden, flower garden or orchard of Medina. Due to these descriptions, one would have assumed there was a great amount of greenery therein, with abundant flowery and lush vegetation. However, the profound love possessed by the devotee of Medina causes him to view this entire scenario completely differently. And he says, if lush greenery and various other alluring points of interest were found in Medina, perhaps it would have been said that people visit the city to see them. The reality is, they do not visit Medina for this reason. The green dome and golden gates parallel to the resting place of the final Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
are the two most exceptionally beautiful sights in the world. They are firmly entrenched in the hearts and minds of every admirer. The catalyzing reason behind admirers reciting Medina, Medina again and again with their hearts brimful with a longing to visit or see the illuminated city is because the master of Medina sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam himself is residing therein. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad yearning for Medina. The devotee of Medina Amir Ahl Sunnah wrote Rafiq al Haramain, a book full of guidance for travelers to the two sanctuaries, Haramain Tayban. Not only does this work contain guidance in regard to correct manners for visiting Makkah and Medina, but it also describes how to perform Hajj and Umrah correctly, as well as important rulings pertaining to them. When referring to this book, he said, In order to write this with full attention, I lived in the home of the late Haji Yaqub, father of Haji Abdul Habib At-Tari. Springtime was beginning to settle in with a multitude of colorful flowers blossoming everywhere. Every home had an abundance of flowers outside it. At that time, the luminous plains of Medina came to mind. The heart of Attar came to this conclusion. The blossoming of these flowers is nothing compared to the luminosity of Medina's plains and deserts. A person may fall prey to negligence due to the beauty of these flowers. However, instead he will incrementally draw ever closer to his objective by remembering Medina. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad Visiting the shrine of Sayyiduna Hamza Dear Islamic brothers, the entirety of Medina is to be beheld and gazed upon with reverence. Its mountains, deserts, caves, even the very thorns on the flowers of Medina are to be looked at with love and utmost respect. The illuminated city is permeated with the aura of perpetual spring, and one will observe this everywhere he looks. Two of the most well-known places of visitation in Medina are Mount Uhud and the shrine of the final prophet's uncle, the Lion of Allah and his messenger, Sayyiduna Hamza radiyallahu an. Various other shrines belonging to honorable companions alayhi murridwan are also located nearby. Amir Ahl Sunnah has visited this sacred shrine numerous times. On one instance, he embarked from Karachi to travel to Medina by himself and came across a familiar person. Together, they set out to visit the shrine together. Indeed, visiting these places and presenting oneself before such personalities is a great honor. Highlighting the great esteem this action holds, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam himself would visit the shrines of the martyrs of Uhud radiallahu anhum at the beginning or end of every year. The martyrs of Uhud reply to Salam. A narration explains how the merciful Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam once visited the martyrs of Uhud and made dua there in the following manner. O Allah, your distinguished servant and your Prophet bears witness that these are martyrs and they shall reply to whomever extends salam to them until the day of judgment. Miracles Affiliated with Martyrs of Uhud In Dalail al nabuwa a book written approximately 1000 years ago, Imam Abu Bakr Ahmad bin Hussein Behaqi rahmatullahi alayhi writes concerning an acquaintance who said, 
My father took me to the shrines of the martyrs of Uhud early one Friday morning. The sun had not yet risen and I walked behind my father. When we reached the shrines, he exclaimed, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fa ni'ma uqbaddar Meaning, peace be upon you, the recompense of your patience. So, what an excellent final abode is achieved. I heard a reply saying, And may peace be upon you, O father of Abd Allah. My father turned to me and asked, O son, did you give that reply? I said I had not. Grasping my hand, he moved me to his right side and gave salam once again. The very same response was heard. Giving salam for the third time, Yet again the same response was issued. My father fell into a prostration of thankfulness after this. O devotees of the Messenger, visiting the shrines of the honorable companions and saints is a matter reserved solely for the fortunate. Observe how we derive evidence pertaining to the visiting of shrines from the book of a religious elder dating back over 1000 years. This also highlights a miracle belonging to the martyrs of Uhud. Not only did they reply to the salam offered to them, but they even possessed knowledge of the name and patronymic of the conveyor. May Allah have mercy upon them, and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Amin bi jahi khatamin nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. When the final Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam himself visited the shrines of the martyrs of Uhud, what issue could then arise by visiting the shrine of a pious person? O oh Allah, destined from us to remain in the company of the messengers devotees and grant us the honor of visiting shrines belonging to religious elders with utmost respect and manners sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad the mountain that loves the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam after visiting the martyrs of uhud Amir Ahl Sunnah would visit the renowned mountain that loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. The good fortune of this mountain cannot be undervalued by any means. Mentioning himself, Amir Ahl Sunnah said, If only I were but a small rock upon it. This blessed mountain was sanctified by coming into contact with the sacred feet of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam Regarding it, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam said Hada Uhudun Yuhibbuna Wa Nuhibbuhu Meaning, this is Uhud, it loves us and we love it Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Rahmatullahi Alayhi adds Mount Uhud is situated around three miles north of Medina. It is clearly visible from the illuminated city, especially Jannat al-Baqi. Thereupon are shrines belonging to the companions martyred in the battle of Uhud, such as the leader of the martyrs Sayyiduna Hamza radiallahu anhum. Visitors flock to it in great numbers. I myself have seen hajis clinging to it and shedding tears as well as kissing rocks belonging to it. Every believer naturally bears love for Mount Uhud and the mountain itself loves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Wooden or stone objects can perceive things and bear the capacity to love and hate. A tree trunk cried due to separation from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and a camel tearfully requested for help in his court. The Messenger of Allah 
وسلم, loves Mount Uhud, the area it is located and even the rocks thereupon. Alongside this, each and every one of the aforementioned love the Prophet وسلم, The accomplished Mufti also says, He who knows what is contained in the hearts of stones, Will he not then know what is in the hearts of mankind? O admirers of Medina, Mount Uhud is approximately 3.75 miles long and stationed at a door from the doors of paradise. In another hadith, Mount Uhud is mentioned to be a mountain from the mountains of paradise. Prophet Harun alayhi salam the brother of Prophet Musa salam is also buried at a pinnacle of this mountain. Seeing the shrine, however, is incredibly difficult now. Shining Stones Amir Ahl Sunnah says, When I visited Mount Uhud, it was very hot. Look, I said to my friend, Look at how these stones shine brightly. Every precious stone of the world is insignificant before the blessed stones of Medina. When time came for us to leave, we had forgotten the path that led us back, surrounded by mountains on all four fronts. We also did not find anyone who could guide us. Amir Ahl Sunnah's friend became worried, yet he himself did not show any sign of concern on his face. It was as though the heart of Amir Ahl Sunnah was saying, This is the city of my beloved Master, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What possible reason is there for me to worry when I am here? Laying himself down on a rock of Medina, he then recited the following couplet of Allama Jamil Al Rahman Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Lasha mera taiba ke be ba me para ho aur ru bane bulbule bostane muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam may my lifeless body lay at rest in the desert of medina may my soul become a songbird in the garden of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam by extension this means if only I were destined to die in the deserts of Medina, with my body laying at rest on this sacred earth, may my soul leave my body like a songbird and go on to roam in the garden of Muhammad. As Amir Ahl Sunnah, the great devotee of Medina, was deeply engrossed in love. His friend was becoming increasingly worried. The friend began to think, What a truly unique devotee of the messenger this man is. He has no concern for finding a way back, nor is he worried of the potential life-threatening consequences of being alone here. Although if night falls while we are here, nobody will come to aid us. Amir Ahl Sunnah was unperturbed and totally at ease. His heart and mind were simply engaged with this. Where are we? We are in Medina under the protection of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Acting upon the instructions of a blessed hadith, he consumed some of Mount Uhud's herbage and grass as the final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, When you come to Mount Uhud, eat from a tree or some grass thereupon. Ultimately, the way home was found, and they returned to their place of stay. Sallu alal habib sallallahu ala muhammad.